Rugby World Cup warm-up matches, folks. France and Scotland get back into action this weekend, and boy, have France made some changes. We will go through the lineups, some of the stats from last week, the uh, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one may be going to go. But um, yeah, if you thought France's squad last week was kind of experimental and there were a few unfamiliar names at test level, uh, all the big guns seem to be pretty much back. This week, last week was 25-21. Scotland had that big comeback win despite the red card to Xander Fagerson. But um, yeah, uh, the French coaching staff seemed pretty philosophical about that defeat and are um, all kind of looking at it as just prep for the competition in a month's time. For France, the number one, number three side, sorry, in the world, uh, a bunch of changes. By Marchand and Aldeguerri are back into the front row. Cyril Bay is certainly one of my favorite props in the world. He's got a heck of an offload and he's a good scrummager. So he'll be looking to get back into the thick of things. Wokey retains his spot in the second row, which is pretty pleasing because he's been a guy kind of lacking on test match game time after you know missing a bit of time injured earlier in the year. Flamont comes back in in the second row, so it's not like the hugest second row as when you have a Paul Willemser or a Telfer Fanua there, although I believe there's a little bit of an injury cloud over both of those guys, but uh, it's certainly a very skilled uh, second row. Wokey's ability in the air is pretty unbelievable, and Flamont around the park, um, also very high work rate and great hands. Back row, Boudinot, and then Olivon and Aldrit alongside him, so... Uh, Boudinot continues on from uh, from last week, made a bunch of tackles and had a few carries. In a loss, though, disappointing for him. Olivant back in is great to see. And then Gregory Aldrit, expect him to carry for days because that's just what he does. He is an unbelievable workhorse machine of a player and a boy can he bust some tackles as well. 9-10 uh, combo of Dupont and Intermark returns with Dupont as captain. Um, I can't imagine seeing a heck of a lot of rust on those two guys and playing each other, playing with each other at club level means uh, their level of understanding goes on pretty well. And then uh, Dante and Fiku is that kind of very familiar midfield with Dante, the big bulldozer, looking to have those big carries. And uh, Fiku just seems to be that high intelligence guy who is um, always in the right place at the right time, be it on a defensive read or a link up man. Uh, setting up a play. Um, one of the key guys in the team, I would say personally. Mm, the uh, wingers are Villiers and Pernod. Great to see Villiers back because we haven't seen him play uh, for France for quite some time. He did become the kind of premier French left winger for a while before injury kept him out for some time. And Pernod is uh, one of the guys who always seems to play. It was a little bit surprising almost to see him not play last week. Like even when other players are sometimes rested, Peno always seems to go. And uh, Ramos is there at fullback. So, boy, it's, um, what is it, 13 out of the 15 guys starting did not play at all last week. So, very similar to what we've seen uh, from the likes of Wales and their match against England. A whole bunch of changes. But in uh, France's case, it's bringing back some of the big guns, albeit in the press conference. Gaultier was kind of very reluctant, at least if Google Translate or YouTube Translate is uh, to be correct, that he um, he didn't really want to call anybody the first team, second team kind of thing. But ultimately, there's some pretty big experience back in the French squad. Uh, Bougarit and Jean-Baptiste Gros drop to the bench. Antonio is back into the 23, the big unit that he is. Verard is also into the 23. Cholero drops to the bench and Makalu likewise. So it's just the two backs and Luku, who's into the 23, and Biel Biari, who had a pretty good debut last week. Looks a sharp ball carrier. Um, yeah, just those two guys covering the back line. But remember that Makalu can genuinely cover uh, the loose forward spots and also wing if needs be. They did mention that there were kind of knocks to guys like Bamba, Telfa Fenua, Kors, Tanga, uh, Willemser, well at least Kors is on his way back, but knocks to like Bamba, Tanga uh, from last week. So maybe that's part of the reason they have made some changes, but also I'm guessing rotation was just part of the plan. Uh, for Scotland, they have kept things a fair bit more stable, remembering they are their third game in, 
because they played uh, Italy the week before they played France, so they are a game kind of ahead. Schumann, Turner, and Nell, that is your front row. Remember, Alexander Ferguson's going to be sitting for a while with his suspension. Schumann continues on, and George, George Turner comes into the 23. Nell's getting a start after being on the bench last time. Richie Gray and Gilchrist continue on in the second row. They'll be wanting to get some nice clean line-out ball. Wokey's going to be trying to disrupt them. Uh, Jamie Ritchie's also back into the 23. It's his first game uh, in this Rugby World Cup warm-up cycle coming back from injury, and he captains the side. Rory Darge, the tackling machine, and Pilfer Merchant is there in the number seven jersey. And then uh, Jack Dempsey continues on at number eight. Ali Price is also um, getting a crack at nine this week because... Uh, White, I remember, suffered a knock in that last game. So Price is your guy at number nine. Kind of, it's a little bit of a blast from the past, seeing as he seems to have kind of slipped slightly in the picking order. And then there's that midfield combo of Jones and Tupulotu, uh, continuing on. They seem like they're going to be the guys starting at the World Cup, and they've had a lot of game time together, which, in terms of that cohesion thing, can only be a good thing. But the kind of stars of the show last week were the back three, Duan van der Merwe, Blair Kinghorn, and it was Darcy Graham that week, but it's Kyle Stain who gets a start this week, so Darcy's getting a wee rest, and uh, Kyle's going to get a run ahead of him. Like, the Scots busted a bunch of tackles last week, and they were largely down to those three guys uh, in the back three. McAnally's also back into the 23, alongside Rory Sutherland and Javin Sebastian, so three new front row replacements. Scott Cummins continues on. Sam Skinner's also back into the 23, alongside Josh Bayless, so likewise, they're only playing the two backs, being George Horn and Ollie Smith. Last week, Scotland, man, they dominated in that second half. Their possession numbers were pretty huge, 60-plus percent, despite the red card, which was a minor miracle in itself, although they didn't really manage any clean breaks, which is a wee bit surprising. They were breaking tackles, but not really breaking the line, if you know what I mean. Um, they'll be trying to look to be a bit sharper, but boy, uh, they're up against a big old French pack, but as I said, they are two games into their campaign already, the Scots, and most of these French guys are in their first game, so there may be an element of rust about them. Uh, France last week, 14 penalties conceded, was uncharacteristically high. They are usually one of the kind of better disciplined sides, and um, they averaged seven clean breaks across the Six Nations, but only two last week against the Scots, so neither side was really able to carve the other open, and also France offloaded a lot less than usual last week, so it may be that the French are kind of keeping their cards a little bit closer to their chest. Um, average score across the last five games is now 27-21, and the split across the last five is 3-2 to two to France, so it's a pretty even split between the sides. That being said, the French are massive, massive favourites for this one, with all those big guns back. 16 points, say the bookies, the French are going to win by, and uh, 11 points, says the rugby forecast algorithm. It is on at a slightly less familiar location in saint Etienne, which I think is more of a football location than rugby, but I'm sure there'll be a loud crowd in support of this one. At 9.05 local kickoff time is great for those of us in New Zealand because I think that's like 7.05 in the morning, which is better than in the middle of the night. Uh, Nick Berry is the ref. Let's hope we are not talking too much about him come the end of the game. If you would like to see... This fella, walking around China, trying to get a beer while wearing a Lentz the Rugby jersey. Feel free to check out that video. That's Two Cents on Tour. That's the second channel run by yours truly. Um, it's certainly not rugby, but I was wearing a rugby jersey in that video. So if you want to see me getting a beer and going to a very bizarre beer museum, if you can call it that, um, feel free to check it out. You would be doing me a personal favor if you do. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. How do you reckon this is going to go? Do you think this French squad with all their big guns back are going to be too good? Or do you think the Scots can really build some momentum going into the World Cup? Gregor Townsend is kind of happy either way that they're going to be getting that kind of vibe of what it's like to play in France come the World Cup. So um, yeah, it's going to be a good experience for them no matter what the result. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon.